Hello, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us for our monthly Community Mental Health Transformation webinar. I'm Megan G, the Communications Manager for the Community Transformation Programme across Sussex. Um, and we are joined today um, by Martin Domini and Emma Logie, who are going to speak to us about the role of the voluntary community and social enterprise within the Community Transformation Programme. Um, so just to get us started with a little bit of housekeeping, so if you want to turn on live captions for the webinar today, if you go to the bottom right hand corner of your screen, there should be three dots. And if you click on that, you're able to turn on captions if that is helpful. Um, we'll be offering, um, might even be more actually, but there'll be at least 15 minutes for questions and answers at the end of this session today. So if you do have any questions throughout the webinar, there is a Q&A um, chat box, which will be found in the toolbar of the webinar screen. Um, so if you do have any questions, please pop them in there and then we'll run through all of them at the end. Um, all um, participant cameras and microphones have been turned off. Um, so don't worry, you don't have to go in and, and manually do that. Um, so you should just be seeing the presenters today. Um, the webinar is being recorded. Um, so if you do want to watch it back again, or if you've got colleagues um, or friends or family who are also interested in this work, then um, we will circulate the link round to this with the summary of what was discussed today um, by email. Um, so please do share that with anyone who you think would like to watch it as well. Um, and as I say, a summary of what we're discussing and a bit more detail um, will be sent round to you in a summary pack um, by email, which will be either later today or tomorrow morning. Um, and we'll also send round a link to a really short survey that we sent that we send round after all of the webinars. It's just a really helpful way of us finding out um, whether there's anything else we could be doing differently in the webinars, anything that would be helpful for you, um, and just for us to check um, on how useful the webinars are being for people who are attending. And then lastly, um, just want to let you know that all previous webinars that we've run so far, so since November of last year, you can re-watch them all back. Um, we've got a YouTube playlist that has all the previous webinars on there. Um, so if you have missed any or you want to watch them again, um, you can scan the QR code that's on the screen at the moment. And the link to that will also be included in the email that we send round to you. Um, so do give that a look as there's lots of really helpful information and resources included in those. And I'm now going to hand over to Martin and Emma, who are going to lead us through our presentation today. Thanks, Megan. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our webinar today. Um, I'm Emma Logie. Um, and although this is part of my role, I'm also a senior manager at BHT Sussex. Myself and Karen Page, we both lead for West Sussex for the VCSC Mental Health Transformation and Alison Lake, she's our network coordinator. So she looks after the mental health network in West Sussex. Thanks, Emma. Are we okay to move the slide on? Thanks, Megan. I'm just conscious I've got two boxes up, so I don't know if people can see my camera is on or off at the moment, but uh, welcome everybody. Really nice to, uh, to meet you all today. Uh, my name is Martin Dominey, so uh, I work with Carla and Andrea in the VCSE Transformation team, and we cover East Sussex and Brighton & Hove, and obviously working very closely with uh, Emma and, and her team in West Sussex as well. What we do, obviously this is quite a variety of stuff um, that we, we do between our jobs, um, and it differs in the different areas but we try to summarize here. Um, so historically, the ways of mental health services have been created and led have been very much sort of primary, primary care, like GP surgeries and SPFT, Sussex Partnership Foundation Trust. It's kind of our job really to voice what the voluntary sector are doing already and get those voices heard and promote co-production between us and the community transformation in general. So it's working in a bit of a different way, but a really positive step and, and the co-production aspect, as much as it can be difficult sometimes, it's really lovely, lovely way to work. 
We work in direct partnership with the co-production leads across East Sussex, Brighton and Hove and West Sussex. They're a major part of the community transformation and a really important part to move forward, making sure we've got the voices of people with lived experience directly involved with the development of all the, all the services and how we move forward. So we're that connect sort of bridge between the community transformation itself and the voluntary sector across Sussex and it's about creating opportunities for involvement in all levels of design and development so you know looking from strategic all the way down even down to paperwork salaries you know service specifications all the nitty-gritty parts and doing that all together as one great thanks Emma, so in terms of kind of our shared objectives, kind of you know, what we're kind of measured on really is just to really kind of there's a real intention to kind of for the VCSE to kind of be fully integrated in the governance of the programme, the transformation programme. And that's really kind of sitting at board system. And when we say system, we mean kind of cross Sussex and place base, again, meaning kind of local, either kind of East Sussex, West Sussex or Brighton and Hove and to make sure that we kind of provide representation of all the different work streams. So kind of NHS England have a requirement. There's priority work streams, which is kind of eating disorders. Uh, the, uh, uh, sorry, I've what they are now, sorry. Uh, so the- Emotional needs. Emotion, yeah, complex emotional needs Need. and rehab as well. Thank you, Emma. <laughs> as well to making sure that kind of you know as emma was saying really the kind of the voice of the vcse is kind of represented at those meetings but also kind of opportunities to seek to out kind of what the vcse could be more involved in in kind of in the future as well what's really helped around this is actually it's a requirement for nhs england to be able to for all these kind of local areas to demonstrate the vcse is actually a part of this government governance and is actually a part of the conversation and the planning and delivery of services going forward, which has really enabled kind of roles, similar, you know, as, as Emma and I is to actually kind of be funded and actually becoming much more involved as well. So it's a really good step in the right direction around that. Uh, one of the other objectives that we have is so the networks, the VCSE networks, we could we'll talk more about them. But this is a real kind of way of actually improving communication and increasing in engagement and kind of conversations around the transformation program as well. Uh, we aim to kind of work really collaboratively in the co-design development and alignment of models. So as the system changes and, and, and sort of areas change, that we're kind of everybody's kind of kept up to date about how does that affect the services that they're delivering, future commissioning as well, to make sure that we're really kind of integrated on the whole kind of system program as well. Uh, we're looking kind of to increase kind of funding for the VCSE sector, developing process and infrastructure uh, around kind of some of the local providers and kind of the alliance or kind of lead partners kind of going forward over the next kind of couple of years as well. So the funding we kind of really mean around some of the funding that's available in terms of the programme, but also how do we strengthen the whole kind of VCSE offer as well, or how do we work on a more closely together to be actually going kind to of think about other funding pots that we can really take advantage of going forward as well. Uh, obviously, a key is around supporting that kind of workforce planning to increase the number of roles of the VCSE and types of roles, and really to strengthen one of our key principles as is around kind of one team approach to making sure that actually the VCSE is also seen to be the same team as kind of clinical pe people, uh, but also kind of people with lived experience that we are kind of just one team and then making sure that everybody feels kind of supported, supervised, and we do look after each other and our, our staff in terms of their own kind of health and wellbeing as well. Thanks, Martin. <clears throat> What's happened um, so far? What have we been up to? Um, I think it's fair to say we've been active in these roles for a year and a half to two years, dependent on the place. Um, a huge part of that so far has been the emotional wellbeing service and then that development. The emotional wellbeing service started in coastal West Sussex three or four years ago now but it's been developing gradually across the whole of Sussex. We're now in 27 out of the 39 primary care networks, so a group of GP surgeries, and we're planning on going live continually up to 39. 
it's it takes a lot of work and we have a lot of meetings um but those meetings are you know we've got spft we've got the icb we've got bcst then we've got people with lived experience um it's sometimes tough but it it really is it does work well we we put together um, service specification, job descriptions. We're trying to bring a consistent approach to these services, but understanding that in the place, they actually need to be flexible for the needs of the clients, the patients, the needs for the areas, where the need, the gaps are. So it's been a really long road, but a really interesting one. And the emotional wellbeing services are going from strength to strength. We've got full caseloads, we've got mental health support coordinators and mental health practitioners. So there's a lot of co-production going on and they're going really well. Our job is to continually bring in that BCSE aspect. And there's a lot of work, for example, going on at the moment about data collection and how we do that because historically we've done it separately and it's about bringing that all together. Leading on from the emotional wellbeing services, we do a lot of events and workshops. Some of you may have been at the summer workshops that were Pan Sussex, and then we had some more place-based workshops in the autumn of last year. We've highlighted some integration pilots, which Martin will talk a bit about in a minute. Um, but those autumn workshops allowed us to really focus on those integration pilots and take them forward. Um, there's ongoing events and workshops. And as Megan said, she will be sharing sort of different events and workshops that you can be involved in, in the summary pack. Um, over to Martin. Great, thanks Emma. So when we talk about transformation, we really kind of talk, we are talking about the, you know, how the services kind of work together, how do they integrate together? How do they address all the things that we know and the frustrations that people are using the services or people working in the services know you know, around kind of long waiting times or not kind of meeting criteria, not being able to kind of access certain services as well. So how do we address all those big issues that we've all been kind of battling with as well? So we have a dedicated uh, integrated working group that's really kind of looking at the model, the processes, the pathways, and really kind of trying to explain the kind of the detail about how this is going to work and how does it really improve the services as well so that's kind of looking at kind of what the kind of the overall shared vision is what the model looks like how can we could describe the model and uh and then but also how do we deliver something in a kind of realistic and achievable kind of way you know with, with the kind of the finances in, in the mind as well so that kind of group is kind of meeting regularly and it's really made up of kind of lots of different people from different parts of the sector, the VCSE are kind of part of the kind of co-chairing of that meeting as well. So how do we use all everybody's expertise to kind of kind of create something that's really, you know, sustainable over the next kind of five or 10 years as well. As some of that kind of work that kind of then goes into what uh, Emma was mentioned and kind of our integrated pilot sites, you may have heard them as being described as wave one or wave two sites as well. And uh, they in Brighton, they've decided they're going to have one wave site. So the whole city is involved in that. But West Sussex, there's kind of they're looking at the Crawley area that Emma leads on as well. And in East Sussex is kind of High Wilden and Lewis and Havens. So there's a series of kind of workshops that, again, kind of uh, Emma mentioned, looked at the kind of priorities, what the ambitions of are of those, those areas. And they develop their own kind of task and finish groups. All areas are identified kind of well-being hubs, places people can physically go to kind of, you know, to have kind of have their support needs that are really important as well. So there's some individual work in terms and place based, but there's also kind of there's meetings that take place kind of across the Sussex to make sure that they all kind of work in a very kind of similar way going forward as well. There's triage kind of work about how people access services, what some of the delays are, how we can make it quicker, that have really kind of taken kind of a really good steps forward as well. And thinking about navigation, how people are care coordinated. You know, we know there's other changes in the system. Uh, I don't know if everybody's aware of kind of the care plan approach, for instance, and that's kind of sits in the statutory and then somebody will could be identified having higher in, kind of intensity of support and the care coordinator, that's all we're actually going to be uh, stopping as well. So how do we kind of really address that need for that really good care coordination and navigation of kind of people with some kind of complex needs as well? 
And then kind of it's with that overall aim is around that transformation. We really want to be kind of bold. We really want to do things differently and do things better in the future as well. So we mentioned before about the networks and uh, we're really pleased how these have gone in all areas as well. We're really pleased that, as you know, we've got so many people signed in up. And I think kind of what, what they are really is around that collaborative space. We really want to make sure that people feel like the network is their network as well. So it's very inclusive. We work really hard to making sure that smaller providers are really kind of involved. Sometimes it's very easy for the kind of large or medium sized providers to know this, to feel part of it. But we really want to kind of engage and communicate with some of the smaller providers that are out there as well, because they really are a part of kind of the model going forward as well. A support capacity building, sharing skills, knowledge, you know, it's a really kind of vibrant kind of arena for people to kind of use their expertise to learn more from each other as well. And it's, you know, across a really wide kind of set of membership as well. Uh, we want to kind of make sure it acts as a conduit for sort of the stakeholder engagement. And as Emma's mentioned a couple of times, is as having that strong voice within the kind of transformation as uh, program as well. Enable linkages and integration uh, around other areas of kind of work as well. So wellbeing services, Brian is a good example, or aging well. So it's like trying to get all these different networks all kind of working really, really closely together to share information to ultimately to make it easy for people to use services as well. Uh, we will be kind of doing this more, but we want to make sure that there is a real opportunity for members of the network to come together to consult around the design and development of the models going forward. So this kind of integrated working group that I mentioned as well, we'll be bringing out what the model is, getting feedback, going to making some of those amendments and some of those improvements as well. So people really do feel they have a voice and they have an influence on how that kind of looks going forward as well. And then ability to kind of explore opportunities for further kind of development of partnerships, stakeholders, and kind of you know changing needs of funding. We we know there's a, there's kind of potential changes in terms of how people are contracted as well. So we want to make sure that people are really aware of that, but also kind of have input about how they want to be contracted as as well, and kind of what some of those kind of you know how things could look going forward into the future as well. So we're really really pleased how this is going, and we you know this is a really good kind of space and time to kind of advertise and increase our membership across Sussex as well. So as mentioned, there's three networks and there's no reason why anybody couldn't be in, uh, part of all the networks as well, but there are individual ways to join those networks as well. So in Brighton is contacting Andrea. She also kind of covers East. And uh, we also saw a picture earlier around West Sussex, around Allison in, in West Sussex as well. So it, they work really closely together. So even if you're in one network, it would share links to the other networks as well. So we really want to kind of, you know, just make it as easy as possible for people to kind of find out information, you know, to share information as well, to learn a bit more what's going on. Thanks, Martin. <laughs> so there's lots of other ways to get involved, not just the uh, mental health networks, although they're, they're a key okay. one. There's also the Transformation Ambassadors, who meet quarterly. So that, that group is about sort of um, sharing what's going on with the transformation, promoting it, how to get people involved. There's the SCALE Network, so the Sussex Co-Production and Lived Experience, really vital part of all of this. Um, there's lots of task and finish groups and, and sort of groups that spout off of this and have focus on certain areas. So of course, there's a lot of work going into the integration pilots at the moment, for example. There's lots of webinars and events just like this. And again, as Megan said, she will share any upcoming events and webinars in your summary packs. And there's also the network newsletters that go out, giving a really good overview of what's happening and where and how you can get involved. And it's not just the network contact details. If you do want any more information at any point, you know, you can contact Martin or I or any of anybody else that we've mentioned today. Back to you, Megan. We are indeed. Thank you both so much. Um, so before we go into the q and just going to give a very quick plug for the webinar next month. So that will take place on Wednesday, the 21st of June, 
same time, same place. Um, and that one's going to be um, giving us an update of kind of the latest progress and the next steps um, just to do kind of a, a bit of a check in. Um, and that's going to be led by um, Nigel Everson, who is our interim um, programme director. Um, so if you are available, please do register for that one um, and spread the word to encourage other people to join as well. So we're now going to move into questions. So if you do have any questions for Emma or Martin, please do pop them in the Q&A box and we will run through as many as we can. People have been very quiet so far. So I think they're probably just taking in the information. So we'll give it a couple of minutes. Um, we did have an earlier question um, from Mel, um, which was asking about um, the work of EBEs and with the VCSE and very kindly offering um, support, um, which is really appreciated. Thank you, Mel. Um, so um, I have responded in the Q&A box to that, which everyone's able to see, um, but just to um, just to share with the group as well. Um, obviously, VCSE and the programme do work really closely um, with um, our co-production colleagues um, and with the lived experience advisory groups, the leagues, um, the scale network, as Emma mentioned. Um, and we've also got a co-production lead within the programme, so Natasha Barefield, um, who is absolutely instrumental in helping to ensure that people with lived experience and families and carers are um, given the opportunity to be able to get involved um, in co-producing um, everything that we're doing within the community transformation. So if anybody does want any more information about that or to get involved um, please do send us an email to the community transformation mailbox um, the email will be shared at the end of the slides but also that will be the email that you receive any correspondence from from me as well so I don't know if anyone else has got any more questions at all if you do have questions please do put them in the box OK, so we've got a question here. Um, how can I find out which GP surgeries in Worthing currently have the emotional well-being service? I think it's be one for you, Emma. Yeah, um, I don't personally cover that area. Karen sort of does that. We've got a bit of a split in West Sussex because there's um, the Pathfinder Alliance. So you've got all the different organisations that cover different areas. Um, what I can do, though, is get back to you. Um, so if it's possible, I'm not sure, Megan, um, to get Rachel's details, then we can we can share that information. I do know that they're live in the majority, um, but I wouldn't want to say for sure. Um, but I can I can easily get that information for you. Thanks, Rachel. I think it's worth mentioning, Megan, isn't it? There is some work around improving communication in terms of where do you find information about what's available, you know, and uh, and making that much more accessible for people? Because we recognise that actually what we find ourselves like, well, we've been delivering kind of services in slightly silos, you know, previously as well. We want to kind of come together and actually say, well, we're one team, we're one system, and then there's sort of, there's sort of very clear places people can go and find out what's what's available, how does it work, who is your provider in that local area is a really good example today as yeah. well, isn't it? So there's a real ambition to actually really improve accessibility and information sharing as well for the program. And you know the emotional wellbeing service that that is based on a Pathfinder model for West Sussex, um, but it is uh, referrals from the GP surgery itself rather than anywhere else. But if you, if there was anybody struggling or wanting help, information, advice, or guidance across West Sussex, you can go to your local Pathfinder provider. And, and in Worthing, that would be West Sussex Mind. Thank you both. That's really helpful. Right. Has anyone got any more questions at all? We've covered everything that was in the box so far. So obviously, if you do think of any questions outside of the webinar, that's absolutely fine. Please just email them through to us. Um, so that's the Community Transformation at SPFT um, inbox, um, which obviously you'll get the emails from me from as well. So um, yeah, if, if you having your dinner later on, you think, oh gosh, I should have asked this. It's fine. It's not too late. It's never too late. You can still get in touch with us and we'll obviously answer those questions retrospectively. So that's not a problem. Yeah, and I think it is just that kind of request, really. If, if you're not a member of the network, please do. Or even if you want to discuss it uh, with any of us, 
kind of listed as well, you know, about joining as well, then please do contact us. Okay. So it's all gone quiet. So I'm going to give it one more minute and then we might be finishing in record time. <laughs> Um, if there are any more questions coming through, just give it that last minute um, and I'll just remind you where you can also stay up to date about information about the programme. Um, so we are on social media. So if you give us a follow um, on Twitter, um, we're on at Sussex CMHT and our VCC colleagues um, as well have also got VCC MH Sussex. So we're very active on there. So do give us a follow if you use social media, as that's where you can find out about lots of the latest news, but also opportunities to be able to sign up for events and webinars and things. Um, so yeah, do keep an eye on those. Okay, so we just got some comments, no questions, but thank you. It's been useful to listen today. Thank you. Okay, excellent. I think that's all in terms of questions. Um, so I think we can probably bring the webinar to a close. Um, so thank you very much, um, Emma and Martin, for your presentation today. Um, I hope that everybody's found that found that useful. Um, and obviously, yes, we'll send around some more information via email. So do obviously get in touch with us if there's anything else that you would like to know about at this stage. Um, but thank you all so much for joining us. Um, and I hope you have Thanks a so good much. afternoon. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.